Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to use a Linux tool called JPEG Optim in order to try to optimize and compress your image files on a Linux server. So basically, think about if you're using like a content management system or you're doing something where your server is having to present a lot of image files. Well, especially if the image files are going to be showing up in, in web browsers, basically they're going to be showing up in HTML pages, one of the issues you can run into as a website administrator is simply because you resize an image in CSS or HTML that does not actually make the image file smaller for when the server has to send the image file to the web browser. Some of the problems a lot of uh, new website administrators run into is basically they have a very large image files, let's say they're 5 megs or maybe even 500 kilobytes in size, and then the issue is, is they send those whole files over to the web browser and then they simply shrink them down into little thumbnail images. So that means you have a teeny tiny little thumbnail image that is actually a very large file size. Uh, so the problem there is you're going to be using up a lot of bandwidth and your website is not going to have very fast performance because you're sending these very large files basically to show up as tiny little thumbnails on, on the, uh, the website. So that's not a good way to go. So one of the things that you can do is you can try to optimize and compress your image files basically make them smaller. So if all, you, all you're going to be showing is a little thumbnail anyway, why don't you make that image file Make, maybe take that down to 50 kilobytes or maybe even smaller than that at, for, for that file. So that's all that has to be sent over to the web browser. So what I'm going to be showing you how to use today is JPEG Optim is a command uh, line tool in the Linux world. It allows you to compress and optimize your image files to hopefully, again, make sure uh, things such as your websites work better. That is a class we're going to be doing today. Now, the first thing that I have to say is warning, warning, Will Robinson. Like... No, seriously? <laughs> seriously? Warning. <laughs> Normally I'm like, warning, warning. Oh, maybe you might goof up something a little bit. This is one of those times like, no, seriously, listen to what I'm stating. So be careful when you're using JPEG Optum because to be clear, you overwrite the source file by default when you use this tool. By default. So if you do JPEG Optum, you plug in a size, you plug in what image file you want to compress or optimize, it will do that on the source file and all you will have left is that file. So basically, if you screw up your source file and you don't have a backup, your image is gone. So by default, you're working on the source file. So if you do something stupid, you're going to mess up the source file. So today, again, I'm going to be showing you this demonstration. I have a virtual machine spun up. I just have a bunch of just crap images, uh, test images that I'm going to use. And so what I would say is play around with test images, uh, verify that this does what you want it to do before you go to a production environment. And then to be clear, when you go to the production environment, back up all the images in your production environment before you run this thing on them at all. Because remember, by default, it overwrites the source image. It is very easy to do something absolutely asininely stupid with this particular tool. So just, yeah, again, warning. You have been warned at this point. So with that, let's go to computer and I can show you how this works. So here we are at my demonstration system. Uh, again, I use a MacBook Pro for my demonstration system. On that, I've installed VirtualBox, and within an instance in VirtualBox, I've installed Ubuntu Desktop 18.04 uh, LTS. Uh, so uh, any version of Ubuntu you're gonna be using, uh, this should work fine for you. The reason that I'm using the desktop version is so that I can very easily open up the image files, show you things like the, the file structure and all that kind of thing. Uh, but do understand, you can run what I'm showing you today on a pure 
pure uh, Linux uh, Ubuntu server with just the command line, you do not need a GUI interface. I'm simply using a GUI interface uh, to make it easier for you to understand uh, what's going on. Now, the first thing that I want to show you is the file structure that I've created today. So again, when we go into the terminal, you understand what's happening. So basically what I've done uh, is if you open up uh, files over here, this opens us up into the home directory for the user Bob. And so within the home directory, I have created a folder called JPEG Optum Test. Within JPEG Optum Test, I have put 10 image files here. You can see the image files range anywhere between like 115 or 100, yeah, 15 kilobytes uh, all the way up to like 213 or so kilobytes. Um, I also have an output folder. So again, when we're going to be doing this quote unquote real, uh, I'll put in JPEG Optum, I'll put in all the options. And one of the things that I'll do is I'll say output to this particular output folder. Uh, if we open up an image file just to show you, I simply double click on this and it basically these are just pictures of my local grocery store. So that's that's the file structure that we're gonna be dealing with today. Uh, so past that, let's go down to show applications. Uh, then you go here and uh, basically you just want the terminal. So we're just gonna do terminal and we're going to open up the terminal. In order to install JPEG Optum, it is in the standard Ubuntu repositories. Uh, so all I have to do is sudo apt hyphen git install uh, JPEG Optum, um, and this will install it for us. A super secret password of one, two, three, four, five, six. And now it's going to go through, doesn't even ask us if we want to install it. It'll just keep installing, takes a second, and now it's installed. Uh, so to be clear, uh, there are no configuration files for this. There's no INIs or anything that you have to deal with. Uh, so it is now completely installed. So past that, let me clear the screen. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is just make sure where I am in the folder structure. So I do PWD and we can see that I'm currently in Bob's uh, home directory. So since I'm there, we do ls -l. Uh, I'm going to be going to the folder JPEG Optum test. So I simply do CD uh, JPEG Optum test, enter ls -l. And then we can now see all of the image files that are here. So the image file that I showed you before uh, was this 10.jpg. So since this happens to be at the top, this is what we'll deal with first. Uh, and what we can see here is that it's currently at 188,000 kilobytes, right? So basically, I just want to try to shrink that a little bit, see, see if I can make that smaller. Let's see if we can make it down to 50 kilobytes. Now, one of the important things to understand here is, again, even when we give it a size, it is going to try to shrink down to that number, but it might not make it there. It'll, it'll, it'll shrink to basically as much as it can. So in order to try to shrink uh, 10.jpg down to, let's say, 50 kilobytes, uh, all I have to do is I simply have to call it jpeg optim. And then from here, uh, then I'm going to say what size I want. So uh, hyphen, hyphen, and then I do size equals... And let's do 50K. So 50K is for 50 kilobytes. And then I give it what uh, file I want to modify. And so I'm just simply going to do 10.jpeg. So basically, this calls JPEG Optum, tries to shrink this down to a size of 50 kilobytes. And that is for this particular image. Now, it's important to understand, you do not see an output directory here, right? So again, this is going to overwrite the source file. Uh, now, all I have to do is I hit Enter. And now we can see it was optimized by 72%. If I go back and do ls -l again, we can see now it's down to about 50 kilobytes. So if we go back, we take a look at our files. Uh, so we go to the JPEG Optum folder. And so we take a look at 10.jpg. We can see it is now down to about 50 kilobytes versus the size of the other ones. And we can open it up and we can see what it looks like. So we can now see that it is a hell of a lot more pixelated than it was. Uh, so again, before, when we took a look at the image file, it looked pretty nice, it looked pretty pretty. Uh, now it looks pretty ugly. But the thing to realize is if we, if we shrink this down to let's say a thumbnail size, let's say maybe that's gonna be the size of the thumbnail, then even though it's pixelated, it's so much smaller now, uh, the end user may not be able to notice it. So that's one of the important things with this, is you've got, you've got to be thinking about what is going to be the size where your users are going to be viewing the file 
and then determine what's best. Uh, so that's basically all there is for, for the simple using JPEG Optum. Uh, past that, one of the important things to do with JPEG Optum is to put a destination. Uh, so let's go and let's look at uh, one.jpg. So let's take a look at one.jpg. Uh, we take a look at it here. So we can see that's 213 kilobytes right now. And if we take a look at it, again, this is the grocery store. And so this is showing blueberries and berries and whatever else, right? So let's close that out. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to optimize one.jpg, but I'm going to dump it into the output folder, right? So with that, uh, let me just uh, clear the screen real quick. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to do JPEG uh, Optum. Then we're going to do the size again, hyphen, hyphen, uh, size equals, let's say, uh, 50K, like we did with the other image. Uh, then we want to do a destination. So we're going to do hyphen, hyphen, a dest, and that's going to equal, and then whatever the folder is. So again, so we're currently in the JPEG Optum test folder. So basically we're just gonna do the normal folder path. So we have a folder called output. So we're simply going to output into that. And then we're gonna do space and they're gonna do one dot JPEG, right? So basically one dot JPEG is going to be, try to be shrunk to 50K and the output is going to go into the output folder. I then hit enter. Uh, it was optimized by 76%. We go here. Uh, we open up the JPEG Optum. One of the things we're going to notice is at this point now, since we had that destination, this the, the original JPEG file was not modified. So we can go in here and we can take a look at this file now. We can see this was modified, so that's 51 kilobytes. We can open this up and we can see it's a lot more pixelated. See, that's really, really pixelated here. So we can shrink it down. We can try to figure out what size we think the thumbnail is actually gonna be when it shows up on the web page, And then we can determine if that's good, right? So we can click clear out of that. We go back to the first JPEG. We can open that up so we can see what this, this is. It looks a lot better. And so again, that's where you can go through when you can play. You can say, well, is this better, this better, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can overwrite uh, so let's go back here to JPEG Optum again. Um, so one of the things you can do here is let's say 50K was too small, right? 50K was too small. Um, it just looked bad. So we can do 100K. And then one of the things we want to do here is then we want to give another option hyphen O. So again, hyphen O, basically this is just going to be to overwrite. So we did JPEG, uh, we do JPEG Optum, size 100K, destination output, hyphen O to overwrite what is there. And then we give the, the, the same file again. So this is one of the ways you can go through. And again, you can play with it. You can do 50K, see if that works. If that doesn't work, overwrite, do 100K. If that's almost there, maybe go up or down or whatever. Then you press enter. Uh, basically, we can see it was now overwritten. Overwritten. We can go here. We can open this up. Uh, we can see that this is now at 100K. We can then open up this particular image and we can see is looking better. So it's less, it's less quality than the original, but it's better quality than the 50K. And this is where you can go through and you can play around and see what works for you. So this is basically all there is to JPEG Optum. The important thing to realize is again, by default, it does overwrite the source file. Uh, but all you do is again, you just call JPEG Optum, you put in what size approximately you want the file to be, you put what the destination is, uh, if you, you overwrite, so if you think a file already exists by that name, you can overwrite, and then you give it uh, this the, the image file that you want to be dealing with. The other thing to remember here is you can actually give multiple image files at once. Uh, so I could do, let's say, JPEG, uh, JPEG Optum, then we can do uh, size equals, and then let's say do 100K, uh, uh, like we did before. Let's say we do the destination equals output again. And then one of the things we can do is we can actually just do multiple files. So you do one dot uh, JPEG space, uh, three dot uh, JPEG space, four dot JPEG, right? So you can put multiple files in there if you wanna do multiple files. Uh, we hit enter, we can see it went through, it did the multiple files. And then now we can see we have two, we can have three and we can have four and we can open these up and we can determine if they're the quality that we like and go from there. So that's the basics of how to use JPEG Optum and why it would matter to you.
So now you have an idea of how to use JPEG Optum in order to try to compress and optimize the image files that you may be storing on your server. Again, this can be a valuable thing for everybody involved. Everybody involved. Not just the server administrator, but also the end users, right? Too many times we're sending very large files to end users when at the end of the day, the end user can't even see the difference, right? Why send a one meg image file that's going to get turned into a tiny little thumbnail when you might be able to send a 100 kilobyte file uh, that the end user will be completely happy with but then it's a lot smaller right not only is this good for the administrators and the people that, that are running the infrastructure but it's also good for the end users because that's that's so much less data that actually has to be sent to them over their ISP and so websites load faster so on and so forth uh, JPEG Optum is one tool that you can use uh, in order to try to optimize your image files uh, and overall it works pretty well as with a lot of things in the Linux world it is a little bit quirky you do have to play with it the end results might not be always what you're expecting so be careful make sure to back up your image files before you start messing with them and especially when you're playing around with this make sure to play with you know disposable image files uh, basically on a virtual machine do not play with this on a production machine because you can screw things up very quickly do remember again by default by default uh, this little tool overwrites the source file so again if you're sitting there and you're like oh wow this is cool I can use this to optimize my WordPress website so let's say you're running a WordPress website on your own on your own instance up on DigitalOcean or something and you're like wow I can optimize the images on my, 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 my website if you just simply go and you start playing with it uh, on your production on your production WordPress site before you really know what's going on and especially before you have a backup you you can do a lot of damage quickly <laughs> you can do a lot of damage like really quickly so be careful with that um, as always uh, I enjoyed uh, teaching this class I look forward to seeing you at the next one if you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.